Hey, good morning. I'm out here in Fredericksburg again and uh, just doing a walk around, checking out his, uh, some historical houses. And been wanting to do this for a while. Wasn't sure how to approach it. Uh, the city's too big, of course, to fit into one video. So decided to uh, break things into sections. And so uh, this morning I came out to Lower Caroline Street. It's one of the uh, more historical parts of town. And Caroline Street, probably the most historical road in the city. And to give you some history on, on this uh, on this section, uh, a guy named Roger Dixon um, moved here 1749. And uh, anybody from the uh, Fredericksburg area is going to be familiar with Dixon Street. Yeah, anyway, he moved here 1749. Uh, he was a lawyer, uh, also a land speculator. And uh, in 1752, he bought this uh, uh, he bought this property just south of the city. Uh, it's about 330 acres. He had to grid it gridded out into 40 lots, and uh, had Caroline Street extended down here. And so he bought the property, and actually wasn't too successful. He had a hard time selling. But uh, he uh, he died in the 1770s. All of this property was then bought by a guy named Charles Mortimer, and uh, then uh, shortly after the uh, after the Re Revolutionary War, the uh, economy started to boom and things picked up, and that's when this area really took off. So, and uh, yeah, this uh, this area is pretty neat. Where I'm I'm standing, I'm within a mile of two presidents. Uh, Rappahannock River is uh, back uh, behind these houses of the city dock in, in the uh, Rappahannock River. Across the Rappahannock River, you've got Ferry Farm, George Washington's home. And up here, quarter mile, maybe half a mile, uh, you've got the uh, home of, or it's where uh, James Monroe lived. So, and <clears throat> uh, this section, the uh, d development really uh, began starting about right here. This bottom half, uh, I'm on the uh, 100 block. Uh, th this was a big shipyard uh, originally and ex extended down to where Hazel Run meets the uh, meets the Rappahannock and uh, I'll be walking through through the uh, 100 200 and 300 blocks so this house uh, was built to 1855 and uh, this whole strip actually was uh, was developed to 1855 this duplex here and then there's a uh, second duplex right up here. And this uh, this duplex uh, actually took a, a lot of uh, shelling during the Civil War. And supposedly there's still shell, fragment, in, in, shell fragments in the house, they say. And uh, also on the inside, there's some graffiti written by Union soldiers. Uh, they occupied the house. And this here across the street, this house, it's probably, this is probably the most historical house in the area. It's called the Century Box. I'm not sure how they came up with that name. And uh, also pretty neat back then how they, they seem to like to name their houses. But yeah, anyway, this uh, this house was the home of, well, first of all, this was probably the, uh, the, the best little piece of property in the area. It sits on, on a high uh, bluff overlooking the river and this was the home of George Whedon Revol Revolutionary War General under George Washington uh, crossed the Delaware with them uh, saw a lot of action during the Battle of Yorktown and uh, this house was originally built 1786 and uh, this land was actually purchased by George Whedon and Hugh Mercer they were brother-in-laws they purchased it back in, in the 1760s 1764 I believe but yeah, I don't know why it took so long to uh, to build but he Mercer, of course, died in the Revolutionary War, the Battle of Princeton. And uh, so when he died, interesting story, that Hugh Mercer's children or his family moved in with George Whedon. And uh, yeah, I guess kind of raised his family. And then when George Whedon died, the house was willed to William Mercer, Hugh Mercer's son, his oldest son. So... Yeah, the children were later inherited the property. Governor General Hugh Mercer was. So yeah, a lot of history there. Oh, also, uh, uh, th this area uh, suffered he heavy damage. Like, like I say, heavy, uh, heavy shelling to the uh, duplex across the street. Um, it, the uh, Union Army had uh, a lot of artillery up on the Stafford Heights across the river, 
and there was a pontoon bridge uh, just just ahead, a little, a little to the left. And uh, yeah, so this uh, area in particular uh, su suffered heavy, heavy damage. And uh, it was also heavily damaged. There was a big flood here in Fredericksburg in 1941. So, oh yeah, and I uh, missed this house over here. So this house was actually uh, it's just, uh, two houses combined. Uh, there was originally a house uh, a little further back built in the 1830s and a house up front that was built in the 1870s. And then in 1920, the two, yeah, you can see on the placard, the uh, 1870s, uh, the two houses were combined. And uh, a guy named James Harrison lived here. And uh, yeah, he was a doctor. And his family lived here until 1981. So, and then I'm gonna cross the street here, uh, enter the 200 block, and you'll see uh, Dixon Street right here. All right, so this house here was built in the 1880s. Now maybe it was the 1870s. Um, I don't see a placard, but uh, anyway, the end of the 1800s, it became a military academy. So um, it was called the Phillips Academy. And it's a bit, a bit of history on that. And this house was kind of uh, stuck in here in, in 1900, so a little bit newer. And yeah, this area is really neat because you've got a mixture of 17th, 18th, and 19th century uh, architecture. So a lot of unique uh, buildings. And this house here was the home of Samuel Phillips. And I'm just going to uh, assume he's the one who built the academy. And uh, this is also where they think uh, Roger Dixon's home was. And it, originally in the 1700s, this whole strip was his estate. There are uh, dependencies back here. Uh, all that's gone. Um, yeah, it says that was built in uh, 1836. So... All right, this house, these two houses were built 1890, or 1890s, I, I should say. And this house is built in what they call a Swiss chalet style. <laughs> so, pretty neat house. And then up here, this was a, a property. It was built as a rental property by that guy, Charles Mortimer. And uh, there's a little house squeezed in there. Don't know much about that one. Uh, and it's got the uh, little stepping block to get on your carriages, little horse things, tie your horse up. So yeah, this house is famous for being the residence of Matthew Morey. And he's one, uh, one of Fredericksburg's most popular residents. Uh, he was known as the uh, Pathfinder of the Sea. He was a Navy general. And uh, he, he's famous for writing the first accurate map uh, of ocean currents. Um, for example, uh, if there's a hurricane in the northern hemisphere, it spins one way. In the southern hemisphere, it spins the other. And he charted out how to how to turn into the different uh, turn into the winds and and so on. But anyway, so he lived here later in life, kind of uh, toward the uh, dur during the Civil War period. Um, all right, down here is another house. It was built as a rental property by that same Charles Mortimer. And a guy named Lawrence Brooke lived here, and he's the brother of Robert Brooke, who was uh, Fred, uh, he was uh, he was a Virginia governor, and uh, he's buried over in the Masonic Lodge. I just know because I did a video on that a couple months ago, and uh, you might be familiar. There's a Brooke Park in the area, and um, yeah, oh, and uh, Robert Brooke, he's the one that owns Federal Hill, kind of. Uh, it's down off Hanover Street, further in Fredericksburg. It's a big, uh, big estate. So, I'm gonna walk back down here, and and it gives some uh, history. Caroline Street, as well as Caroline County, was named after King George II's wife, Queen Caroline, and their oldest son was Frederick Lewis. Uh, that's who Fredericksburg's named after. They had a daughter named Anne, so you've got Princess Anne. There's Princess Anne Street right across the uh, way. Uh, they also had a daughter, Amelia. There's Amelia Street in town. Uh, 
King George II was from Hanover, Germany. You've got a Hanover Street. Uh, he had a daughter, his mother, and his grandmother were all, all named Sophia. You've got a Sophia Street over there. So, yeah. Anyway, um, gonna walk down and um, get the other half of the street. And if you're wanting to know where I got all this information, is uh, I was at, hold on. Oh, and right here, this road, uh, Rocky Lane, it leads uh, 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 down to the, uh, to, to the dock, to the river. And this was kind of the main path back in the, uh, I guess, 1700s when you got off, uh, when, you, when you got off your ship at the dock, you walked up here into town. So, and this was the, this is the ferry that led across to Ferry Farms, George Washington's uh, old, old estate. So, oh, I was saying that uh, at the uh, Fredericksburg Visitor Center, they've got little pamphlet, pamphlets going over uh, the history and uh, some, some of the famous houses here in town. So, and uh, also if you go to uh, Target, they've got little, uh, little books on Fredericksburg in the back. And uh, yeah, I'm the nerd who buys those and reads those. So. <laughs> All right, this house, um, not much historical significance, built uh, 1904. It's just a, a really uh, kind of cool, crazy looking house. And yeah, so yeah, pretty uh, interesting architecture, I guess. So yeah, that's that one. And Again, don't have much uh, history on this house. Just a, a really interesting uh, looking place. And I flew my drone over it earlier. And uh, yeah, it's huge. It says it was built in 1890. So let me run up. This one as well. This is a, another, um, it doesn't date too far back. And I don't see a date stamp uh, by the door. So, anyway, so we'll move up to this house here. And this house was an originally a kitchen. It was a dependency to this larger greenhouse. And uh, it was originally one, one, uh, one floor. And uh, it was also a schoolhouse at, at one time. And it originally built 1787. Yeah, you'll see it was a kitchen, kitchen dependency. This house here also built 1787. Um, yeah, and this is the Gorick Caldwell house and the Gorick's uh, another big family here in Fredericksburg. And anybody familiar with the area, they're gonna be, they're gonna be familiar with Gorick Pharmacy. Um, it's a pharmacy slash store that's been in town for about 150 years. And the story on the Gorricks is uh, the, the patriarch, I guess, would be Peter Gorick, uh, moved here from Ireland, 1804. He was Fredericksburg mayor three times. He was a professor. And uh, let's see, he had a son, William Gorick. He's the one that opened the pharmacy. He, he was also uh, uh, he was also Civil War. Um, he was 16 years old when he fought. And then they have a second son, Judge John Gorick. And he's famous for writing two books on the history of Fredericksburg, and they're pretty uh, pretty popular resources. A lot of places I visited have cited it. And then there's another guy named O'Connor Gorick, and uh, he was involved with uh, Mary Washington College uh, being brought to the area. So, yeah. Anyway, and this here, this house, it's probably been rebuilt, but this was the first house built on this in this whole area back here, and it was the home of Roger Dixon's brother. And uh, again, yeah, a little step up thing. And <clears throat> yeah, uh, and, and the story with this uh, goes is that he actually lived in Williamsburg and Roger just kind of talked him into building the house because he was trying to stimulate growth. And supposedly, I, I think he just, he never really lived here. So yeah, that's the story on that one. And let me walk up uh, across here to the, to the 300 block. And across the street here, this guy named 
Judge Green, I want to say his name is John William Green, but yeah, he was a judge, a lawyer here in town, and he, he had his law practice uh, right, right there. So, storm windows down there. And as you walk down here, there was a Revolutionary War captain. Uh, his name was William Lewis. And this was his residence. Sun's hitting this one pretty good. And it says that one, this is another older one, 17. No, no, uh, I'd say it's 1875. So, I think there's one more on this side. And you'll see the uh, the Fredericksburg, uh, the train station's right up there. That that uh, that eats up the 400 block. So this house here was owned by a guy named George Rowe. And a, a little story with this guy: uh, during the Civil War, he was captured. He he wasn't he wasn't fighting in the war, but he was captured along with uh, 18 other prom prominent uh, figures. And he was held hostage uh, by the Union Army. He was taken up to D.C., uh, thrown in jail. And he was uh, in jail for about six weeks, and they basically held ransom because the Confederates had captured two Union men. So, yeah, just a, a little story on that. And let me run across here to the uh, other side. This will be the last little section. All right, and this is a, a pretty big one here. And this is actually this is where James uh, James Monroe lived, and the house he rented from his uncle, who was another judge, Judge Joseph Jones. Um, it says built uh, 1785, and uh, it's had to have been rebuilt. But anyway, this is where it was, and um, yeah, his uh, and obviously uh, James Monroe he had a law office uh, over off Charles Street. And uh, it's a museum now. You should go check it out. All right. So in this little little house here was also owned by uh, Judge Jones, and I think it was a tenement house. Some of his slaves lived in here. So this is built in 1801. I have a feeling it's been rebuilt. And then this little house was uh, squeezed in here just in, I think, 1907 is what I read. And then uh, 1803, this little house uh, was built here. Hi. And uh, it was a dependency for this house here. Hi, how's it going, man? I'm going to be And uh, so doing a, doing a vlog. This guy, George Lawrence. No, I'm sorry. This guy, George French. Uh, own this house here. It says built is another older one, 1787, and uh, yeah, and he pretty much uh, owned the land over here. And don't have much history on this, but I think this was originally just a dependency for for that house there. And um, yeah, so 1890 that was built. All right, so got it all in, and uh, yeah, I'll eventually knock out. Uh, I guess it'll be the 500, 600, maybe 700 blocks. Uh, a lot more action down there, a lot of uh, businesses. So, anyway, so that's my little tour. See ya.